for all of you guys that are scared about, oh, I feel like I'm going to get made fun of for what I'm doing. I made slime videos. So you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it cannot get much worse mm. than I was in high school making slime <laughs> videos. So you're now listening to The Creator Code, the podcast dedicated to unlocking the secrets of your favorite online creators. Each week, we will deep dive into the tech, tips, and tricks to find out what truly makes them tick. Whether you're a new creator just starting out or an accomplished veteran, this show is made for you. And now, here's your host, Maddie Tingles. All right, welcome back to the Creator Code Podcast. I am your host, Maddie Tingles. This is the podcast where we unlock the secrets of your favorite creators. Thank you so much for being here. As always, full video uh, of these episodes are on YouTube, so check that out. Also, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is season two, episode nine, and we have a very, very, very special guest joining us, content creator, vlogger, D1 gymnast at Brown University, of course. I'm talking about Julia Bedell. Julia, hello. Hi, Maddie. Thank you so much for having me on today. This of is course. so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it's my first official podcast oh, that I've ever done. That so, was seriously, that was going to be one of the first things I was going to ask if you've done podcasts <laughs> before. Yeah, I haven't. Okay. I listen to a lot, but I've never done one. So exciting. So exciting. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. This is um, so basically when I put like lists together of creators that I want on. It's like almost a little bit selfish because literally like they're all just people that I enjoy watching. <laughs> so like uh, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really glad that you're here. Let's let's get right to it. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, it's been a really great summer. I cannot believe how fast the summer is going by, though. I know it's really crazy how it's already August. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at my calendar and I was like, wow, I move into college in less than a month. Oh, that my gosh. Terrifying. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Exciting, but terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's flying by. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's 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 get to it. Um, February twelfth, two thousand nineteen. Uh, you yes. created your channel. Let's just deep dive a little bit into that. What made you decide to start a channel? Um, were you uh, an avid YouTube watcher before that? Um, walk, kind of walk me through that. Okay, um, so this actually trails a lot farther back than February of 2019. Okay. I had originally started my YouTube channel, a different YouTube channel actually, in I think it was December of 2016. Oh, wow. So yeah, I was very young and it was actually centered around slime. So okay. this is kind of, <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm not sure how familiar you are with like the slime trend, slime fad. Yeah. But that was like a whole thing um, a few years ago when I loved it. I used to watch all sorts of Instagram videos, YouTube videos, tutorials. And I was like, you know what? I want to try this. Yeah. So that's when I first got into YouTube. I basically just did slime tutorials, slime reviews, anything that I wanted to post on there. I just posted and it was so much fun for me. But wow. naturally, I started to outgrow it. So when right. I did outgrow it, I ended up transitioning to this current YouTube channel that I'm working on. And that's kind of how I started this. Nice. Um, yeah. So it, it wasn't like YouTube was a completely new thing to me when I had started this current channel. Um, I was pretty familiar with the editing software and, you know, the uploading process and all of that. Right. Um, but it was definitely very different content than I had been producing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is, is the slime channel, did you delete the channel? Is it all unlisted? No, it is currently still it's there. Still... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, my friends okay. love to go back and look at it and torment me. <laughs> but it's all, nice. All fun games. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, yeah. so you're, you're, um, you're uploading, uh, I'm just going to call it slime content, okay? Yeah. And yep. then, um, so walk me through what, what got you, talk me about the transition from that to um, what you're doing now, which would be vlogging. Okay. Um, yeah, so how did, you, how did you get into vlogging? Yeah, of course. So um, I, when I started <clears throat> to outgrow my slime channel and I was like, I kind of want to branch into something different because at that time, at that point, I had been producing slime content for like two, three, maybe even four years wow. at that time. Yeah. So I was like, I feel like I've kind of gone through everything that I can go through in this specific field. I kind of want to branch out a bit. Right. So that's why I started my new channel, which is more centered around my personal life, like vlogging my day to day, um, just talking about things that I really enjoy, things that I love. 
basically anything that I'm passionate about and want to document. Like I've documented a lot of travel trips with my family or with yeah. friends, and that's been a lot of fun for me. So I liked how I had a lot more creative freedom with this new channel. I didn't feel like I was as boxed into just one specific like fad or like niche for as sure. some people would say. Right. Um, so I really wanted to just kind of like branch out and give myself more like a broader um, creative outlet, I guess, for sure. when I branched out into this YouTube channel. So, yeah, I would nice. say that's how like the the first reason why I wanted to get into that. And then I guess you could say that my content started to shift from like just general everyday vlogs into more like productive content. Right. As, um, I started to connect with a lot of people <clears throat> through that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually um, so for me personally, that's actually how I came across your channel um, is because the productive day in the life thing is such a huge um, I guess you could call it trend uh, uh, on YouTube right now. And, um, yeah, you've had a few of those like really go off and, uh, I don't know how I, I think I was just scrolling through and, um, cause I have a vlog channel as well. My uh, a second channel is vlog. So I'm always like watching what people are doing and, and, and that kind of stuff. And so that's how I came across, um, that's how I came across your channel. So speaking of trends and stuff, like what, what got you into the productive day? Is it something that you like to watch or is it something that you're, um, I mean, you're, you're good at, uh, um, you know, showing, showing what you're doing during the day. Um, but what really got you into, cause, cause really that's became a, a staple on your channel is the productive thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think I originally, I had just been producing just regular vlogs at this point, but then I think I'd seen a video on my explore page or on my recommend recommendations yeah. and it was somebody doing like a 6am morning routine, productive morning routine, or like one of those video series where they're like, Oh, waking up at 4am every day. Right. Like right. Yeah. Kind of documenting that. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like those types of videos. And I was like, huh, I kind of want to try that. That seems like it would be fun. And I had produced, I think this was the very first video of mine that had kind of like blown up. Yeah. And it was my 4 a.m. like productive morning routine. Right. So obviously mm -hmm. it was not on the realistic side, but it was kind of meant to mimic one of these like 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m. type of morning routines that I had seen. Yeah. And those kind of like inspired me to create my own version of that. So yeah. obviously it was satirical. I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. every <laughs> single day. Right, yeah. um, I know it's probably, I can count on one hand how many times I've woken up at 4 a.m. <laughs> Two of those times being documented in a right, video. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun though, you know, to just kind of sit there. And I, it was really great seeing how many people were like, oh, this is crazy. Like I even had some people commenting, they were like, oh, how do you recommend like waking up this early? Like what right. time do you go to sleep to wake up this early? I was like, honestly, I can't even tell you because... I don't do this often, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, I, I think it's really funny. Um, like, people don't realize... Okay, so for instance, a lot of the productive uh, uh, videos on your channel, right, starts with, like, literally just a shot of you waking up, right? Mm -hmm. But people don't... Re like, as a normal viewer, they're like, oh, cool, she just woke up. But, like, if you're a creator and you know, you're like, okay, so she got up, set the camera up, went back to bed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, that kind of Yes, work. yes. Um, I try not to think about that too much because <laughs> I almost, like, get the ick for myself. I'm like, wow, I'm really going to, like, set my camera up on my tripod, <laughs> go back to sleep, wake yeah. back up on camera. Like, set an alarm so, to go out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think that's so funny, though, just, like, the perspective of, of viewer and creator. That's That's hilarious. Um, well, look, I, they're do they're they're doing really well. I, I think the productive thing has been around for longer than a normal trend. I think so. That's um, yeah, kind of cool. Very timeless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay, let's let's get into this because this is really one of the okay. So, a couple of things. One of the things that I think you have a huge advantage of, and I talk to creators about this all the time, is one when so when you were doing the productive day to start with, you were in high school, right? I was. I think I was a senior in high school. Right. Or a junior, possibly. And, but I was still in high school. Yeah. And so, like, for creators out there listening, that's that's so smart because, one, like, you're, you're creating great content. But also, think about how many people are in high school <laughs> watching mm -hmm. the content. Think about yeah. how many people are like, I want to see how someone else in my exact same situation um, – lives their life you know what i mean so it's such a it's such a huge advantage um that you took advantage of smartly uh uh to to you know um to create content for 
that large of a group. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it so, is a huge target audience. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, move. So moving forward, um, you're at Brown now, right? I am. Yes. Brown. Wow. Well, first of all, congratulations on that. That's big Thank time. So That's much. so cool. Um, were there? I don't. I'm not sure if you ever covered this. You might have, but um, were there other schools that you were interested in? Yeah. So. Um... My like college process was a little bit different because I am a D1 athlete and I had always been planning to do gymnastics in college. Yeah. So I had kind of like reached out to colleges a little bit early. I'm not sure how like familiar you are with like the commitment process behind yeah. like sports, but you can get like recruited and verbally commit to a college before you get to like the college application season, which is like typically fall slash winter of your senior year. Right. So I had, I was pretty young when I committed to Brown. I was, it was December of my sophomore year. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It was, yeah. I had just turned Whoa. 16. It was crazy. Is that normal? Um, like that early? It depends. Okay. Yeah. So I know some <laughs> sports are different, but I know for gymnastics, at least when, my year, uh, the class of 2025, or class of 2021 for high school, Yeah. Um, when we were growing up, it was normal to commit to colleges this early. They wow. recently switched the rules because they literally had eighth graders committing to colleges. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, like, yeah, um, they were like, this needs to stop. It's getting a little Whoa. bit out of hand. Okay. But, yeah, I, I fully had, like, known people that were getting recruited. One of my teammates had gone, committed to Ohio State her freshman year. Wow. which is crazy, oh you know? My gosh. Yeah. I know. Wow. Um yeah, so it but since I was kind of on a different path than some of my other teammates because a handful of my teammates were looking for more of a really heavy like athletic school where they really prioritize that. Right, right. I was looking more for a school that prioritized academics. Sure, yeah. So normally for like Ivies and these types of schools that I was looking at, they recruit a little bit later, mm. but I, I guess things just kind of fell in my favor because one of my teammates, one of my older teammates, was actually already enrolled at Brown, and she was a, doing oh, gymnastics there okay. too. So apparently my college coach had come to my club gym and had watched me train and watched her train before she went to Brown. Got it. And I guess she had seen me when she had also seen my teammate. So she had kind of expressed her interest. Um, she had talked to my coach about it, and she was like, I'd like to offer her a verbal agreement verbal commitment wow. and i was i was shocked honestly because i hadn't really even been talking to that many colleges at that point because i wasn't expecting to have anything happen that early right yeah of the type of, of course i was looking at yeah. yeah because normally for like those types of schools you commit like maybe junior year senior year yeah so it was way earlier than i was expecting wow but, that's crazy yeah. it is crazy oh my god it? especially to a, a like a prestigious school like that's mm -hmm. amazing. Thank um, you. Okay, so D one collegiate gymnast. Uh, uh, what events do you do? So I do the floor exercise and vault, and okay. also a little bit of the balance beam. But Got it. no one even bars. <laughs> right, <laughs> you'll not find me there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I uh, yeah. I I have I did gymnastics for two years when I was like seven. Oh and, wow! Okay. Uh, balance beam was my thing. Okay. Balance right. beam, and then I remember, uh, yeah, jumping into the foam pit things. Okay. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that was my that was my thing. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's that's so interesting. Like, that's an early commit. That's. Yeah. Wow. So was that a lot of pressure, like for junior and senior year? Um, I would honestly say it was like the opposite because, mm. well, right now I'm going back to my club gym during the summer to train so yeah. I can like stay in shape and go back to school in shape, ready for season. Right. Um, and I've seen a lot of my teammates who are, you know, kind of rushing to try to get committed to a college because COVID and a lot of um, college athletes taking fifth years is really throwing off the scholarship distribution. Sure. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, so, like, I have, like, friends that are juniors and, and seniors, and they're just so, like, stressed out about trying to commit to a college because if you think about it, like, my friends and I, like, this is everything that we had worked towards. Yeah. And gymnastics, like, is a sport that you do have to start from a very young age, and, like, it does require a lot of, like, time commitment. For sure. So I think, honestly, like, knowing that I had already been verbally committed to a college since my sophomore year, it, it 
took a lot of stress off of me because then I wasn't so much concerned about, oh my gosh, I need to be always be on my A game. Right. I need to impress all of these colleges, be on top of like reaching out and trying to get recruited. So I think that really made my junior and senior year a lot more enjoyable. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. So for someone who, who maybe has just seen gymnastics on, you know, like watching the Olympics maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And especially for you. So you said Brown is Brown was important to you, uh, of course, getting an offer and all of that, but also um, academically. Right. Mm -hmm. So what happens? What is the next step? So if you're really, really good in college and you graduate college, what is is there anything after that in the in the realm of gymnastics? Yeah. So <clears throat> gymnastics that's honestly a common misconception of it. A lot of people ask me, they're like, oh, are you going to try to go to the Olympics after right. college? And I'm like, that's honestly very uncommon. Okay. Because by the time you graduate college, you're 22 years old, sometimes even older, mm. and your body's almost had it at that point. I mean, you've been doing gymnastics for probably well over a decade if you made it to the collegiate sure, level. Sure. And um, you've just been putting so much, like, so much on your body because gymnastics is a very, like, impact type of sport yeah um and it takes a lot it takes a huge toll on like your physical being yeah so um after college when people decide to go the collegiate route they normally just retire because oh, wow. okay yeah 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 because by that time um you, you've just been through it honestly yeah. but if you are planning on going the olympic route that is normally a decision you make when you're like very young. Like okay. I'd say okay. a lot of these gymnasts are making that decision um, between collegiate or Olympic around the age of like 10, 11, 12. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Whoa. You got to start training very, very early because okay. Okay. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand this, but gymnastics, like qualifying for the Olympics for gymnastics is very difficult because they only take the top four right in the yeah. nation. so <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. it's not like wow. yeah you, you really have to be if you're not even mm. within that range if you're not top 10 in the nation or you don't see yourself getting there yeah i honestly would say it's not even worth it because sure. it's just so much sacrifice for possibly very little in return right so was that so, never was the olympic route never in your in your scope like never crossed your mind or or um Maybe when I was like seven years old, when you were young. but yeah. <laughs> anything beyond that, I think reality started to hit me and I was seeing the types of sacrifices that I needed to make. Right. And I just like, for example, a lot of these um, Olympic athletes, they had to drop out of school and be homeschooled. Right. And that's a huge sacrifice in itself for something that you're not even sure is going to work out for you. Yeah. So I think just like kind of weighing out my pros and cons, I think I did choose the right decision. I wanted to go more of the collegiate route. Yeah. And I'm really happy with where I ended up. Nice. Nice. Uh, wow. Okay. I'm learning a lot. This, that's, that's really, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, what a crazy, and, and, and so you said like, by the time you're like, it's a, it's such an impact sport. By the time you're out of uh, college, you're kind of done. And, and so kind of on that same note, you've had some pretty serious injuries, right? I have, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, walk me through what injuries have you had and, and how were the um, the recovery process and, and kind of how that – where you were in those situations? Okay, yeah. Um, so I would say the two that stick out the most to me are the two times that I had fractured my lower back. Mm. So these two injuries were stress fractures. So that means that they were just caused through a lot of overuse and like mm. constant like um, pounding on that bone and seeing that your spine is like just kind of the center of your body and seeing that it's taking the most impact from like really anything that you're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, my back definitely suffered. Wow. I mean, a lot of my friends and like different people, it seems like certain people just have certain parts of their body that are more prone to injury. Yeah. And mine just seemed to be my back. Wow. So I think my sophomore year, at the end of season, I had fractured my lower back. And that was like a really long recovery process because it's a lot of PT. Yeah. And then I was put in like a hard plastic brace for a month or two. That thing was terrible. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, yeah, it would like bruise my ribs and my pelvis. It was so tight. And then like, you can't even slouch. Like right now I'm slouching. <laughs> and I'd be sitting in school and I'd be like three inches taller right. because I'd have this back brace on. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah. When, wait, was, so when were those? What? How old were you when those happened? Um. So my very first time that I'd fractured my back, I was 16 years old. And okay. then 
the second time I fractured my back, I was 18. So they were two years apart. Okay, so then when those happen, um, was there any like worry about about your verbal commitments? Like, like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I had been really worried um, when I had fractured my back my sophomore year because I was like, oh my gosh, like I had just committed to this college. I <laughs> right. wanted to yeah. I wanted to show my coach like what I was capable of, kind of like prove myself that I was worthy of the spot she had just given me. And then I fractured my back, and I was like, mm. oh my gosh, is this gonna put my commitment on the line? Yeah. So I remember I had called her and kind of started to like talk that out with her, and she just reassured me in that you you have nothing to worry about. We, okay, we know good. you're yeah. She's wow. like, we've seen enough from you. Injuries are honestly very normal for mm. gymnasts. Mm. Uh, yeah, I've had many teammates that have had much worse injuries than me and have come back and yeah. been even better. So, wow. um, yeah, so I was a little bit concerned about it, but she definitely like reassured me that you're going to be fine. And then I fractured my back again senior year, but it was also okay. She was very understanding of the situation. She was just like, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Um, she even like made a joke. I remember she was like, "Oh, like now you have extra time to watch the ne some Netflix." I was <laughs> nice. like, "Yeah." I was like, "You know what? Silver lining, right?" Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. Um, okay. And so, so you were vlogging. Um, you were vlogging when you're in high school, and then now you're at a university. Um, how is that different? Talk to me about kind of the creating part, the filming part. How is it different from? filming you know your life when you're in high school and now when you're living on a campus like i think you've mentioned it even in videos about like sometimes feeling weird or or like awkward pulling cameras out um yeah. talk to me about that because i feel like there's a lot of creators out there that are that are in that um <laughs> pocket of their career where they're like well i'm in a new environment uh i don't necessarily feel like comfortable having a camera out uh you know what i mean mm -hmm. so how has that been for you yeah, so I would definitely say in high school, I had a lot more privacy with like locations that I could film. So it was definitely right. a lot more comfortable being able to just like pull my camera out because whether I was like driving to school or I, I was just like recording stuff in my bedroom or I was making myself breakfast, anything like that. Yeah. It was just a lot more private because I was in the comfort of my own home or like my own car. Um, but college is definitely very different from that because at least my freshman year, almost everything was a public setting, sure, even the bathroom yeah, or yeah. the communal. So I was like, I don't want to like whip on my camera in there <laughs> course, and then have yeah. somebody walk in on me and be like, what's going on in here? Right. Um, so it was definitely an adjustment trying to get, and also my roommate, I wanted to always have like constant respect of her and her privacy because sure. I was sharing a room too. So it's not even <laughs> like I had like my full room to myself all the time because right. she also has a right to half that room. Yeah. So, I mean, when I would go out, I would honestly not even bring my vlog camera. A lot of the college vlogs that I took, I would just record on my phone, on phone. because I was like, I don't want anybody <laughs> to like see me walk. I don't know. It just, yeah. it's a weird thing. Um, like sometimes even when I think about like myself vlogging, it like cringes me out because yeah. I just think about myself like recording myself doing things. And I'm like, I feel like I'm going to get judged for that. For sure. Um, yeah. Especially so, on a campus. Like that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. Um, yeah. uh, hmm. How do you get, have you, do you feel like you've gotten better at it or are you still in that, in that place? Um, I think it has gotten a lot better, like throughout the year at the beginning, I was so timid because I was like, wow, like there's so many new people here, but they yeah. may not yeah. always be new to me. Like it's social media also makes things so weird For because sure. it's like, sure. I've seen you before, but I don't really know you. We had a lot of like orientation events at the very beginning of the school year and people would come up to me and be like, oh my gosh, like you do YouTube, don't you? I'm like, oh, I do. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was just weird that like, and I had sometimes even recognized these people and it's like, do you, do you just kind of start fresh or are you like, oh, you look very familiar. Like, I think I follow you on Instagram. Right. I don't know. So social media has made things so interesting. Hmm. Um, but I would definitely say that. I've gotten a lot more confident with like recording myself on campus. Um, it, it's just still something I'm getting used to though. Definitely not have not mastered the art yet of just yeah. shamelessly like carrying my camera around and recording everything. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like in your, a lot of your videos too have like teammates and, and, and things, uh, you know, in, in the videos. So the people that you're surrounding yourself with on campus, like, do they all know about your channel? Like, are you, are you secretive sometimes with it? 
Um, cause I know that's another thing that creators struggle with a lot is like getting to a point where you're like, yeah, I do YouTube. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say my very like close knit group of friends, they all know that I do YouTube and a good handful of them have been in my videos. And I, I always yeah. ask them beforehand, I'm like, do you feel comfortable doing this? If not, obviously not going to record you and post it to however many people on the internet. Right. Um, yeah. but I would say that my very close circle of friends, they all know that I have a YouTube and they're all extremely supportive about it. I, Nice. cannot ask for like a better group of people to be surrounded by nice. um right. as for like people outside of that like circle i would say they either know through like word of mouth it, it's kind of weird because like i've even like when i'm walking around campus i've had people um like come up to me before and just be like oh you do youtube don't you and mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i do and it's like people that i may not even know at all yeah so um i would definitely say like voluntarily i've told a good handful of people but then also the other majority have just heard through like word of mouth or sure i'm not even sure just yeah yeah just it makes sense media on the internet yeah <laughs> um so you're actually now that i'm thinking about it you're actually one of the first vloggers that i've had on on the channel and vlogging is such a like i i'm have i have so much fun doing it i love the editing i love putting it together but one of the things i always try to ask people that vlog um that i think are really helpful for other creators out there is um how do you decide what to show? Um, like, for instance, like, you know, with your productive day of life, like, you're, you know, you're showing quite a bit of, like, your behind closed door, like, this is me waking up, this is me brushing my teeth, that kind of thing, right? But then, like, personal life, like, you just recently, like, did stuff with your boyfriend, right? And, and mm -hmm. kind of, like, how, so how do you balance that? How do you decide what to show and what not to show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean... Before, like the day, like days leading up to like a filming day, I'll normally, if it's like a productive day in the life, sometimes I have this um, to do list app. It's called Todoist. I would highly recommend for yeah. anyone that's looking for a really good app for productivity. But I, I have like all of my things that I need to do kind of listed out on that. And then I'll kind of gather a group of them and kind of move them to one day. Mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of make that my designated filming day. And then I'll just go through the list and like check things off. Um, so for my productive day in the life, so I'll focus on those. And then I also like to just include, um, lifestyle type things. Like sometimes what I'm eating, like just kind of my basic morning routine, making my bed, brushing my teeth, right. which I guess can be considered like productive, but not like very like concrete tasks that are like, sure. oh, this is a very specific, like productive thing right. that I'm doing today. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm like super, super, um, like precise or like, uh, I'm not really sure what the word is, Yeah. but I just kind of film whatever I am feeling that day. It's kind of just a okay. go with the flow type of moment. Like sometimes I'll be sitting in traffic and I'll think of something and I'll be like, oh, I'm just going to say this on the vlog. And you know what? Sometimes it doesn't even make it in the video. I end up cutting it out, but <laughs> yeah. it's just, I, I like how candid vlogs can be. I'm sure you can agree with me. It's just sure. a very in the moment type thing. Um, and it's great because, you know, really whenever something comes up, whenever something comes to mind, you can just document it. And it's so cool. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that's, I think that's my favorite part of vlogging. Uh, like for like personally is the documentation part because I've always looked at it kind of as like a, a almost like a photo album. You know what I mean? Like I'll go back yeah. and watch stuff from two years ago and be like, Oh yeah, I forgot I did that. You know yeah, what I, mean? I love doing that. Yeah. Okay. Great. Love that. Um, any advice, any advice for someone? I want to go specifically around your age group okay. um, who are interested in doing what you're doing, because I know so many people are. I uh, this like a few months ago, I just went back to the high school I went to and talked with them. And like everyone wants to do YouTube, like no one wants to be a lawyer or a doctor or anything. And you know what I mean? I know, like, yeah, they're all yeah. like, I want to be on YouTube or a streamer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Honestly, so, yeah. so it's such a huge pool of people that want to do this, but it's a very small uh, pool of people who actually do it and are successful doing it. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, any advice for people, uh, maybe a senior in high school or first couple years of college around there um, in, in who are interested in vlogging uh, specifically? Yeah, well... I mean, the great thing about YouTube is just how accessible it is. It's mm. practically free. Mm -hmm. I would argue even completely free. If you just have a smartphone or any type of camera for that matter, you can easily um, film, edit, and upload all on your phone. Yeah. I did that for the first 
two or three years or maybe two years of my slime channel, I had filmed everything on my iPhone 6S, yeah. edited on iMovie on my iPhone, and then uploaded straight from there. Wow. So it's definitely doable. And I think I got to like well over like maybe 100K, 200K just by doing that. Wow. So yeah, I think there's like a common misconception that like, oh, in order to be successful on YouTube, you need all of this like high end like camera equipment and definitely. all of these like crazy editing softwares. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's just not true at all. As long as you're just doing something that you really enjoy, people can, I'm sure you can agree, people can really see that. Your viewers, oh, yeah. it's, that, it's very obvious to them. They, they yeah, know in the first five seconds. Easily, <laughs> yeah. easily. Yeah. yeah, people, it, yeah, it's so easy for people to see kind of your intention behind things. For sure. So, I mean, as long as you're doing something that you enjoy, say, as you were kind of saying, um, if this is like a high school senior or like somebody in their first few years of college and they want to just start vlogging, just do it yeah like i know that sounds so cliche but honestly just pick up a camera and just it, it takes practice you're not you're probably not going to sit down after your after your very first video and be like i'm obsessed right, with that right but just put it out there you know <laughs> yeah. i was looking back at some of my old youtube videos um the other day i just how we were talking about i love to look back on my videos sometimes because mm -hmm. i'm like look at how far i've come I, yeah. or i like forgot that i did that or i forgot that i liked that right um I was looking back at them and I was like, oh, this, my personality is like completely <laughs> different. Right. Like I can see that I've grown up a lot from mm. that. So um, I can kind of appreciate that. But also I, I was a little bit cringed out by my personality because <laughs> it was still, I could tell that I was still trying to get used to being on camera right. in that type of a way. Yeah. Um, but I mean, now here, I'm probably going to be looking back at this in a few years. And like, <laughs> For like, sure. Oh, like that yeah. Either. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, right now, I think I'm pretty content with where I am and I've definitely gotten a lot more comfortable on camera. Yeah. So, you know, practice makes perfect. Just put yourself out there. You, you really have nothing to lose. There you Literally go. Nothing. That, that's yeah. always my, my advice as well. I always just tell people, press record, just do it. Just try yeah, it. Just like, it. because the thing is almost every creator, I'm not even gonna say almost every creator I know who's doing it either as a career or are successful at it that's how they started they just went one day they're yeah. just like all right i'm gonna do it yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean that's um, always how it starts yeah did you ever um when you were in high school specifically did you ever was there any, ever any downside to it uh even like socially like were, were kids ever mean about it or like did you ever get um you know any you know what i mean yeah. Um, and no, I would say I was like generally pretty lucky with this. Yeah. And it, you know what? Honestly, for all of you guys that are scared about, oh, I feel like I'm gonna get made fun of for what I'm doing. I made slime videos. So you know what? <laughs> <laughs> it cannot get much worse than mm. I was in high school making slime videos. So I don't want to hear it. No excuses. Uh, I, like I did that. it and I still took it with pride because I was thinking to myself at the end of the day, I'm like, this is something I enjoy. I'm proud of this. And also it's, it's going to help me pay for college. So, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, so I like that. yeah, that's funny. Honestly, I got pretty lucky though. People would crack jokes here and there naturally. I mean, if sure. you're going to have a friend that is making slime videos, understandable. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, it was always just lighthearted, though. There was never, like, ill intent behind it. So yeah. I, But I, I have heard stories from other YouTubers where they did struggle a lot with the way yeah. that they were treated in high school because of their fame or because of something they were doing um, on social media. So yeah. I, it can definitely vary from person to person. But me, I, I had a really good experience. Nice. I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> do you edit your videos? I do. Okay. Yes. Let's, let's get into that because... Um, as a viewer, that is one of my favorite things about your, your videos is the editing style. Um, I watched a lot of vlogs, like I follow a ton of vloggers and everyone has this, you know, everyone has different styles, of course, especially in the editing process. Um, one of the things I really like about your, your video specifically is that a lot of the times you highlight imperfections. You highlight like when something messes up or like when your camera falls. You know what I mean? Like I know a lot of <laughs> yeah. people like if the camera falls, that's an absolute cut. Like they yeah. don't want that in there, right? But you highlight mm -hmm. a lot of the things that that don't go right, and, and I think that actually makes your content a little more real. It feels like you're almost like watching live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so. Talk to me about your editing process. And then <laughs> I always have this question, especially with yours too. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, your style is very like quick cut uh, sound effect, like, uh, you know, added added little like meme sounds and stuff like that. 
do you just have like a folder of all of those i do yeah i have a folder oh i have multiple gosh. folders on my computer okay yeah okay because i like when i'm editing a vlog because I, I i do a lot of the similar stuff for like the last like five years but mm -hmm. I never like save the stuff, so I'm always like downloading it every time. No. Oh and my so God. I'm always wondering, like, do people just have a folder of all these little additions? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give you a little recommendation right here. Okay. So there's the it's a free um app. I think you can download it either in the app store or you can like search it up on Safari or okay. Chrome and like, download it from there okay. onto your computer. It's called Clip Grab. Clip -grab. And it's basically i don't know where you get your sound effects or like your add-ins for your videos but yeah. i get a lot of mine from youtube okay yeah so, yeah totally yeah so you can literally just copy the url paste it into clip grab and then download it and it just saves onto your home screen and you can just drag it into a folder got it yeah got it yeah so you just have you have you have a couple folders that are just full of all the little yep <laughs> got yeah. it got it okay that's actually that that's great um, all right, so talk to me about the editing process, your style. Where did where did the style come from? And then also, um, yeah, talk to me kind of about the process of of editing. Okay, um, so I edit on Final Cut Pro, which a, so many people ask me they're like, "Oh, what do you edit on?" I edit on Final yeah, Cut Pro. Me too. Um, awesome, I love it. <clears throat> uh, anyways, so basically my editing process. I mean, I just sit down with the raw footage and I run through it, I'd say maybe up to five times. Okay. So I'll run through all of the footage one full time and I'll just, I call it a rough cut. And I just, it's just cuts in between like things that I just don't want. They're pretty like broad. There aren't like a million cuts in between a clip. Yeah. Just if I like a portion that I'm talking in or something that I enjoy, leave it something where I mess up multiple times or just I, I don't want in the video or I just don't think is like necessary. I'll just cut yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, so that's like the first run through. The second one I would say is more dedicated towards if I watch it again and I'm like, I was kind of on edge about leaving it in or taking it out and I mm. left it in, but then I decide I don't want it in. I'll take it out the second run through. Yeah. And then I'll also work on the zoom in feature. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Sure. So that's kind of like the step when I'll sit down and do like <clears> zoom in, <throat> zoom outs, um, more of the camera movement type of edits. Yeah. And sometimes in that phase, I'll edit in, um, sound effects too mm -hmm. so sound effects filters just kind of like camera effects that's when those types of things go in and then after that i add in background music and um just run through the footage another time just to see where i want to add things in like if i want to add text in, normally i add in like uh text at that point yeah my third time through and then after that fourth and fifth time is just very final um run through just making sure that i like everything that's in there yeah. there aren't any like clips that are misplaced or anything and then after that just download yeah. it and then upload it to youtube nice nice yeah. what what uh just on average off the top of your head how long is the edit process for video for you yeah it definitely ranges um depending on how long the final video is but i'd say like on average it's, pro it's definitely over 10 hours but wow yeah. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Yeah, but could I'd say it could get anywhere up upwards to twenty because like I've had videos that have been almost twenty minutes. So right. Um, yeah. If you think about it, even just sitting down and like and proof watching the video, there's yeah, a full 20, twenty minutes right there that yeah. goes into it. Yeah. Mm, what what uh do you have do you, when you're shooting, do you have uh a duration that you're aiming for, or is it just whatever happens, happens? So normally whatever happens happens um yeah. i try not to like restrict my videos and like aim for like a certain um amount of time yeah and same thing with editing if i feel like you know i'm really liking the way that this vlog is i don't really feel like a lot of things need to be cut out of it i'll just leave it in right yeah yeah hmm okay i i, I look i i think um it, it really is like some of the cuts that you do and sound effects and stuff like i've like laughed out loud at and it's like just little, but they're like yeah. just little, little things that like probably no one cares about, but right? it yeah. just adds so much to, to it instead of just cuts of, you know, talking and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Love it. Okay, cool. Um, uh, do you have any plans in the future, uh, for, uh, um, ever hiring any sort of editor or any kind of help? Mm -hmm. Um, if I were to ever hire an editor it would just be solely for the rough cut yeah. because i would say that takes up a, a majority of the time because mo sometimes i'll sit down with like three hours of footage and i need to basically it, sit there and run through every single second of that yeah. footage to see what i want to keep what i don't want to keep um so that's probably one of the most time consuming yeah. like 
places in my editing process. Um, so I would maybe hire an editor for that, mm -hmm. but also it would have to be somebody that I trust a lot totally. because yeah. it's hard because I'm sure you do it. Do you edit your own <clears throat> videos? Yep. Yeah. So I'm sure you can agree with like, uh, it's a very, just like it's in your own head. Like it's kind of sure. hard to explain. There isn't like a, a specific way that things are done it's just kind of the way that you think yep. it's like an intuition almost yep so and the, the problem I i've like... had is like I, so I, I like i i've been told that i need to get an editor forever like my manager's almost every day is like you need to get him because it would free up a lot of time no question it, i yeah, get it undoubtedly but also like one just bare minimum it's it's almost an intimate thing because you know what i yeah. mean to to trust someone with that and, it, and then also, especially with vlogs, you're shooting, you have it all in your head. And a lot of the times it would take longer to explain all of that to someone than it would just to do it yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and also, yeah. I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you like the editing process. Yeah, I do. Um, I think the only times where I'm like, oh, this is a little tedious mm -hmm. is for the rough cut. But yeah. anything beyond that, I really enjoy because then it, I start to move through the footage a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when I'm just sitting there with just the very raw footage, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah it can get a little tedious <laughs> sure yeah yeah and that's 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 my thing too it's my favorite part of the process so i'm like i i i know it would be good just for other things in my life to get an editor but like it's mm -hmm. it's uh it's a lot it's a lot of trust too like you said yeah yeah um gra i think so graduating high school and and going to college uh especially to somewhere like brown um is such a huge change um in in I would say everything in your life. Yeah. Um, what have you yeah. learned? What have you learned uh, in the last year um, uh, going from high school to, to college? Yeah. So, I mean, I would just say, I mean, I'm lucky enough where the university that I go to is just so um, they really prioritize diversity there. Nice. And that is great because you really get people from all over the world going to this college and it just forms the most like interesting and creative community mm -hmm. because it, it truly they sense um, the selection pool is so like slim yeah, the amount yeah. of people that they actually admit into their college. It's like they really sit down and like pick through each person and really just break it down a lot. So mm -hmm. the people that they hand select are just, I mean, every single person that I've met there is just so cool. Yeah. The community is great. Wow. Um, I would definitely say that's one of the things that is like <laughs> the biggest difference from high school because I had always gone to these private Catholic middle schools and high schools. So mm -hmm. those kind of, and especially from my area, um, they kind of just are very similar type of people, like-minded yeah. type of people, yeah. um, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing, but right. I think it's always important to like kind of see the bigger picture, you know, and sure. college has definitely helped me with that because um, I kind of felt like high school, I was just in a bubble. It was a yeah. lot of very similar people doing very similar things. Um, and it wasn't very, it wasn't a very, um, didn't promote a lot of creativity, I would argue, mm. because we were all basically on the same track. Right. But right. in college, it's a lot different, especially mm. with Brown. Um, we have open curriculum at Brown, which means you can take any course that you want. Um, and they also have these. Oh, wow. like, yeah. That's cool. You, and there's no like required courses that you need to take either besides wow. your major. So when right. you select a major, obviously you need to fulfill <laughs> that. But besides that, there's no like history require requirements like. Wow. Math. Like, That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Whoa. you really, it gives you a lot more freedom to take these different courses that you want instead of just having to focus on getting these requirements out of the way before you can start to do that in your sure. upperclassmen years. You can really start to do that from your freshman year. Wow. Um, yeah, so I really loved that. And yeah, I mean, I guess just the living situation was an adjustment. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously in high school, I was commuting from my home. So it's just a very private, yeah. um, more sheltered environment whereas college is more of a public environment where a lot of your living spaces are shared dining halls everyone's there basically yeah um classes lots of people um and then also there's just a lot more freedom in college which is also good sure yeah. so it was it was just weird because like this there's a lot of structure difference because in high school um lots of structure your day is like set up for you right. you know they take attendance still i mean <laughs> right. at least for me we got to have uniforms on so oh, there yeah. was it was a lot i felt a lot more restricted um 
in high school in regards to like kind of controlling my own life. But in college, I definitely felt that freedom shift because, you know, you don't want to go to a class. You're too tired to go to a class. You feel sick that day. You don't have to go. Yeah. Nobody's going to know. For sure. Um, but then again, it's on your back to kind of make sure that you have that work done and you're caught up to speed. But right. then then again, you get to do that on your own time. Right. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I guess just. Yeah. So so it sounds like. Yeah. So you, you've gained a lot of perspective. Uh, you know, in, in just kind of seeing the cultural differences between the two, um, and freedom, but also with the freedom comes more responsibility because you have to make it up, you know, on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's awesome. Okay. Um, speaking of diversity, one of the things, uh, you were adopted, right? I was, yes. I, okay. So I was too. Um, I was Ooh. adopted from Seoul. Uh, South Korea really young when I was like I think I was seven weeks old oh wow so yeah like, even earlier than me yeah, yeah so like really young I was 11 weeks 11 weeks wow okay mm -hmm. um, yeah talk to me about that a little bit how has that how has that been um, was it a positive experience for you um, seems like you you your parents are great um, mm -hmm. yeah. talk to me about that experience because I think you're the, f the first person I've had on that was also adopted too Oh, awesome. Well, that's super <laughs> exciting. Um, so yeah, I was adopted from Jiangxi, China when I was 11 weeks old. And or, oh my gosh, it was 11. Was it? Sorry, I'm like forgetting. <laughs> no, I think it was 11 months. You Did you say seven weeks? I feel like seven, I'm like losing. I said weeks. seven weeks. Yeah. Yeah, you said seven weeks. That, sorry, <laughs> I got thrown off. Um, for some reason yeah. i was 11 months old okay okay yeah, i don't know why i was like wait that doesn't sound right. <laughs> okay yeah sorry yeah I was 11 months old um and then my parents adopted me and it was really great actually because my parents had kind of created this little community among the parents that were also adopting nice um, children from the same agency and yep. we're actually still in contact with a lot of those parents and those kids too nice. so that's really cool that we have that connection but I mean, obviously, I don't really remember too much from when I was adopted because I was too young to really recall sure, yeah. anything. Yeah. But I, I would say it was definitely a very positive thing. I mean, I have been blessed with so many more opportunities um, seeing that I was adopted For opposed sure. to if I wasn't. Definitely. So I mean, just being able to have the education that I've received so far and being able to do the things that I love has been so special to me and yeah. i guess i'm just i could just say that i'm like eternally grateful for that because yeah. i really wouldn't be where i am today if it weren't for that happening when i was absolutely. that young absolutely yeah no yeah. me too o almost identical like my, yeah. my, my life is a million times better uh mm -hmm. than, than it definitely would have been yeah um do you remember this is a, a, a little this isn't on my list but i'm just gonna add to this adoption thing um because i was just talking to someone about this do you do you remember a moment where you realized like, oh, I don't look like my parents? Yeah. Um, this is weird because I had a very specific scenario where like I had kind of sat back and like thought about this for a little bit. So we had gone to Martha's Vineyard. My parents are Caucasian. So yeah. um, we had gone to Martha's Vineyard <laughs> one time for vacation and Everybody at Martha's Vineyard, I don't know why, it was just a very, like, Caucasian-heavy sure. um, vacation spot. And I don't know, I just looked around, and I'd felt, like, kind of out of place. And then also, I was like, huh, I don't really look like my parents either. Mm -hmm. that, I just, I don't know, it made me think. It didn't make me, like, mad or, like, regret yeah, anything. It yeah, was kind of a just, realization like, noticing. that I had. How old were you yeah. around then? What, what, what? Um, oh, I was, like, 15. But okay. I've, I've definitely thought about that before. Yeah. No. Yeah, um, especially when we would, I, I don't know, just in like certain social settings when I would be like next to my mom or my dad and they would be like, oh, is this like your kid or something like exactly, that? It yeah. wasn't like an implied thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, just little things that I've noticed, but. For sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it's been a positive thing, which is which is yeah. really good. Me too. Um, so I thought that was, I, I, I heard you, I think I heard you mention that in a video and I wrote that down. I was like, oh, that's cool. We're both. Um, yeah. adopted. That's great. Um, all right. I have a few more for you here. Um, specifically in the, your, the creating process, uh, who are some of your biggest, uh, inspirations? Oh, okay. Um, so I've always loved Emma Chamberlain. Nice. I yeah. have, yeah, I've been watching her videos ever since she started on YouTube. 
Um, I think the very first video that I'd seen from her was her Coachella video. And mm. then that was released in like 2017, I think. Yeah. And then from there, I have literally watched every single video on her channel, probably most of them multiple times. I just love her content. Yeah. I don't know. It's just incredible. It's I, I was um, I'm actually editing a vlog and I was just thinking about what I said in that vlog. I was like certain creators inspire me to create. And mm. she is just one of those people that when I watch her, it like motivates me to create content because I just see like the impact that she alone has on so many people. And I'm like, wow, yeah. like I also have the power to do that. Definitely on a smaller scale. Yeah. But, but still, um, yeah. it's just so cool. Yeah. Um, mm. So I've really been. I've always really loved her videos um, and just seeing like how far she's gone with it. And so little time is incredible to me. Right. Um, also, she has a podcast, as you probably yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Anything goes, listen to every one of her podcasts. It's <laughs> she's just kind of the word of wisdom in the back of my ear all the time. Right. Um, yeah. And then, your, I mean, would that be your number one, like fangirl meeting in real life? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that I forget. Um, I think I'd gone to, yeah, when I'd gone to California to see my boyfriend, I was like, what if I see Emma Chamberlain? <laughs> right, no, yeah. yeah. And he was like, you're not going to see Emma Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, you I never like, know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, right? Nice. Emma's yeah, a good choice. Um, yeah. Uh, but besides her, I guess there's just other influencers kind of in the same realm, but um, that I also enjoy watching, like yeah. Ava Jules, yeah. Caroline Manning, yeah. Um, and oh, my fam. I've been recently watching like, all of her videos. Nice. I don't know. I just like rediscovered her channel through Ava Jules and yeah. I've just been watching all of her videos. They're so entertaining. Nice. Um, and then, oh, this is kind of a weird one. I don't know if you've ever heard of Matt Stoney on YouTube. Mm, I don't think like, so. He's like one of those speed eaters. Oh, okay. Okay. And just like sometimes, <laughs> I don't know why I'll just like stumble across his YouTube channel again after like a, like a long time of like not watching them. Yeah. And I just follow down these rabbit holes of watching yeah. him eat like, <laughs> Ten thousand calories of poutine. And right. like, yeah, I don't know why. I I just something about that. It, I could sit there and watch him for hours. Wow. But yeah, yeah, that's definitely very I, different from other YouTubers. I think I um, the Ava what Ava Jules, right? Mm -hmm. She's popped up on my no uh recommendations i think probably because of you, <laughs> yours i don't maybe who yeah knows. one thing about her though and I've, I've only watched a couple of hers but um she has great thumbnails yes her I was thumbnails like really pop day. um yes. really really she good she does a so, really great job um shout yeah. out to her uh mm -hmm. let's talk equipment uh real quick uh mm -hmm. as, as, as so you've already mentioned a lot of the times you're on your phone which by the way like you said out there creators listening if you're watching this on your phone, you most likely can film and do everything on your phone. Just so you know, like there's no there's no need, especially when you're first starting out to go get equipment and and all of that. Um, and in, honestly, in some instances, the phone is, has a better camera than a lot of uh, DSLRs anyway. Um, yeah, but see. outside of your phone, uh, what what kind of um, cameras and anything else you're using? You, I know you mentioned Final Cut. Mm hmm. Yeah, so my main vlogging camera is the Sony ZV-1. Nice. So that's the vlogging camera that I've used basically for the this whole entire YouTube channel that I'm working on right now. I got that camera at the very beginning when it first got released um, and I purchased it. And it's really great. Yep. I would highly recommend. I think it's honestly like it is a little bit on the pricier side. But if YouTube is something that you're genuinely committed to and something that you think you're going to do long term, I think it's worth the investment for sure. because yeah. it's just such a high quality camera. It records in 4K yep. um, and the autofocus. The one thing I love about this camera is the autofocus. Incredible. Is well, yeah it, yeah, it was it was one of the first cameras. Literally, it was literally made for vlogging. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like the mm -hmm. product showcase, like the 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 autofocus is crazy on it. Mm -hmm. Um okay, so Z V one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, and then my phone. And then besides that, I mean when I go on travel trips, sorry, I'm looking up here because I have all my cameras. <laughs> you're, up good, here. you're good. Um, <laughs> but I have uh my GoPro. I Oh okay. I don't even know what year this is. I think it's like the Hero si oh Hero Six. Okay. I was right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so the Hero Six, I use that just when I go on travel trips. Yeah. Um and then I have this. I these are just um the 
GoPro. And then the next thing I'm going to mention, these are just things that I use when I go on travel trips. Sure. I don't really use them in my daily vlogs because they're kind of like intricate. Uh, but I do have this drone mm. that I use occasionally and it's um, the DJI Mavic Air 2, I nice, think. Nice, nice. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing drone. Yeah. Definitely on the DJI, DJI is the best. Yeah. 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 yeah sure. They have absolutely great products. Um, I also have a DJI like pocket mini like mm, gimbal nice camera nice. um i'm not sure the exact name of it i'm sorry yeah but it's really great for like stable videos if you want to take any sort of like montage right. so i actually used that when i was doing my dorm tour video it was really great for getting like really steady shots and just um nice. yeah. yeah so i'd say for this channel those are like the main products that i've used yeah. um yeah and nice. but just mainly that vlogging camera is my go-to all the time sure. and then those other things are just to kind of enhance other videos sure but yeah not necessary absolutely absolutely um all right I, I i got one more for you and and we'll get you out of here um if you could hear anyone on this podcast who would you like to hear let's not say emma chamberlain though we already know, we already know <laughs> we already know okay um okay. yeah anyone you would who you'd like to hear on 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 the creator code podcast Okay. Um, let's see. You took it right out of my mouth. I knew. <laughs> we knew. Um, uh, and, and and let's be clear. I would love to have them and Emma on. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, we, you know. You know. Mm -hmm. Someday, maybe. <laughs> um, let's see. Mm, oh, a YouTuber that I didn't mention that I would love to hear just like sp like speak on this podcast and i think would be so interesting to listen to is emma marie okay um he's another type of just like lifestyle youtuber nice um but she's just like so genuine and her content seems so pure and it's like it yeah it's i really love her um she seems like the sweetest person so nice. i i would really love to hear more about her okay. on this podcast love it that were, yeah. love it um all right. Well, look. Thank you so much for this. It was such a, a a joy meeting you. First of all, and um, I appreciate you being here. Um, yeah. Keep keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. You make you make great content. Um, I look forward to seeing what you do next. Yeah. Thank you. Of thank course. you so much for having me on. It was so great. Just uh, and your first podcast. You, yes, first my first podcast. podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. Love it, love it. All right, uh, where can they find you online? This is your chance to plug away. Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> so my YouTube channel is just Julia Bedell. Instagram, underscore Julia Bedell. Um, TikTok and twitter are julia but they're spelt weird i don't know why i did that but i, was, I thought it was being funny but now i just I can't change it but it's spelled right. j-e-w-l-i-u-h okay yep you can find me on tiktok and then on twitter it's the same thing but i think i threw an extra couple of h's at the end because <laughs> nice. for some reason julia was taken yep. um and those are my main social media platforms i'd say okay. everything else is if you're looking for anything else um you can find it in the link of my any video yeah. that i have in the link uh, in the description. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And I'll link, um, I'll link all your stuff in the description yeah. of this too. So oh, thank you so um, much. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Please remember, subscribe on YouTube, uh, leave a review wherever you can. Um, this has been the creator code podcast. I have been your host, Maddie Tingles. Be safe out there. Be kind to others and yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye.